Hello everybody in YouTube land and welcome to a new video series that I am uh, recording on our occasional, on our Friday variety streams here for Arkham Horror the Card Game where I'm going to be building two decks uh, around a card of our patrons' choosings. So one for one deck, one for another. And we're going to try to make those decks work. And then at the end of this video there is a gameplay that you're going to be able to watch once the decks are made. I don't know how long this video is going to be, it's really going to kind of like, we're going to see how it goes. But um, we're, the cards we're building around today are Arcane Insight and Shards of the Void. Obviously Shards of the Void is for our fighter, and Arcane Insight is for our Kluver. But luckily our fighter can actually take advantage of our Arcane Insight. Arcane Insight is... Um, is Arcane Insight's a bit tricky. For me, Shards of the Void is a lot easier. We're going to build like a ceiling focus deck to try to take out everything else. We're probably going to use all of McBride. We're probably going to, I'm probably going to do Jacqueline for this one because I think she'll hit the zeros because of her ability more often than any other investigator will, even with Olive in mind. Uh, but the question I was asking to people watching on Twitch right now is there's like, is there a way to break Arcane Insight? Or is this just like convenience? I see Super Fang post it and uh, use it in their untabooed recs. We are going to be playing these decks. I was thinking we're going to do it without the taboo list. I think that could be kind of fun to try this out without the taboo list. Um, uh, Sarah Hoon says, I would use it as a charge stack with something like Elder Sophist to put tokens on better secret charge using cards. That would be, that does sound like a good idea, but the goal of this, this series is to find a way to take advantage of these cards. So my hope is that I can use Arcane Insight as my goal for it. So like we're not going to use I, I, Arcane uh, Insight as a battery, it does provide three charges. <laughs> but we got to figure out how we can use it to actually succeed. Uh, let's look at our Shards of the Void. And see who we have here. Uh, a student Nunspar says it could be Sick and Marie. That would be pretty sick. This is for Shards of the Void, though. But let's get back to this one. So my instinct initially was Daisy Walker. She has five book. So, like, it puts it up to seven, essentially. Which is, uh... Good, right? Marie could be fun, too. Marie could, uh, she could, because Marie can run, where are you, Marie? Excuse me. Uh, all right. Yeah, because she can run spells zero to five. That's an inter interesting consideration. Um, I do feel pretty comfortable, though, that I think, like, to me, the best use for Shards of the Void were Dexter or uh, Jacqueline, because Dexter has green to take advantage of, uh, the amount of cards we're going to need to play, especially if we're going to be doing ceiling. But I think Jacqueline is going to get the extra damage more than uh, Dexter will. So we're going to do Jacqueline for Shards of the Void. Whoa, we've done it. All right, I'm also going to roll my basic weakness before because parlay, draw, or investigate. All right, cool. Just, it's, I think now when you're doing standalone, you should roll before, especially because you might get one of these, and now we can plan for it, because otherwise we would not be able to plan for it. So, um, Olive is also probably worth it in this deck, and we need some sort of brain booster, right? So we'll do the Crystal Pendulum, because uh, it makes the most sense for Jacqueline. Arcane Insight down with a rogue hybrid where your success through. I mean, I think actually like Arcane Insight with someone who uh, cares about succeeding by X or by less than X, I think is kind of like the dream goal, right? Crystalline Elder Sign is some more sealing though. Yeah, but I don't want to seal the good tokens. I want to seal the bad tokens. And this also cost me six experience. We want to use our stuff for other things too. Because we probably want word of commands. Because we need to find our shards of the void in order to make this work. Okay. What is the voice of Ra? She's going like this. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay, so... Um, and her book is three. So the other thing that's really nice about Arcane Insight, and we're going to do a little bit of a... Uh, the teeniest amount of some non-good deck building in order to make certain things work, right? Um, so, Jacqueline, I'm not going to put any clue-getting assets into her deck. Uh, because what our plan is for if there's ever downtime and she needs to get a, a clue, that's what Arcane Insight is for. Because then that puts her to three. Tresmillion, how's it going? So that's kind of like my, um, we're making a bad decision in order to hopefully make Arcane Insight shine a little bit more. You know how it is. You know how it is. All right, we probably would want to do... So, like, we could go ceiling. They did say ceiling. So, like, there's stuff like protective incantations, which do cost a lot. There is... What is that called? Chthonian Stone? It's like that. That was level 3-1. That seems... Yeah, let's do it. Not too crazy expensive, either. Alright, so I'm just going to save this right now. I want to see what our initial curve is looking like. Okay, it's not crazy. It's not crazy. We're aiming the around a 29 experience deck, but I will go up to 39 if, like, it's required to make things work. <sighs> Shards of Void is going to be the easy one. Arcane Insight is where it gets a bit tricky. I do also like the grotesque statue, obviously. Um, it's like really good. It's like really good. Um, but I think maybe we don't need that if like, if we're gonna just try to seal some more things. It just gets returned to your hand, okay. Um, what does Jacqueline do? If she doesn't draw her Shards of the Void in her opening hand or a, void, a Word of Command. We probably want, like, to, you know, protect ourselves. That's probably worth forks. I mean, it's boring experience, so, like, this could go down to just a level 1 version. I mean, it also depends on who our uh, Arcane Insight person ends up being. Which is good. 8 experience is a lot of experience. Premonition is good for this kind of deck. Amen. That's a great call. That is a great call. It also costs zero, and I love when things are cheap. Um, we probably want some card draw. Or more ways to search things out. And also, like, we probably also realistically want some more economy as well. Crystal Pendulum draws cards. That's kind of sick. That's kind of sick. So if we can get that going and get some cards on that, that would be kind of nice we'll just put it down the rabbit hole and just assume that was part of our deck building and do an xp uh xp reduction maybe recharge to add more charges to shards not a bad idea not a bad idea let's put it in the four one is a little bit spicier but it is also does cost four so let's just start Yeah, no, this one's actually probably fine for her because she can do extra, she can look at extra tokens. So now, here's a question I need to ask you guys at home. When I'm building these decks for this, do we, like, if Shards of the Void is the plan, is that our only plan, or should we also worry about consistency? I'm only playing these decks, like, once, because I really want to see that card shine, right? We probably, realistically, could grab an Azure Flame. Um, because if our goal is to seal zeros, we can use... Uh, Azure Flame's downside is a lot less bad. 
Let's just see these and what we're looking at. We're at 30 experience right now, so that's a little bit spooky. But like with with what we're seeing, and like this is also brings up a good plan to what Tasty Toast was saying. Crystalline Elder Sign is uh, more ceiling. It does seal the positive, but it also actually does make a Surf Flame really nice. So that is a consideration that we can have here. So I think we could probably go down to just a, like a normal ward of protection. We also like, we could also be kind of spicy and just not even put in uh, a, a ward of protection. Don't tell Travis. Whatever you do, don't tell Travis. Um, we're kind of, for this stupor, we can run uh, some fearlesses. That's a good way to deal with this stupor. It's horror. Yeah, okay. I did read that right. I did read that right. Protective incantation takes up the... Uh, not protective gear. What the frick? Protective incantation takes up the spell slot, right? Yeah, it does. Dice Gods, we are building some decks around Shards of the Void and Arcane Insight to start the stream off today. So, that's going to be a good time. Um, four kill spells. We don't really have a plan outside of that. So we're just kind of like hoping nothing bad happens to us. We need to have eight more cards and we do have three more experience we can add, which is kind of an awkward number. Like, in a perfect world, like, the rechargers def are definitely good here, right? But I think in a perfect world, we want to hit a zero every time. So then, like, our zeros become our, our sealed cards. What's the big one? The seal of the seventh sign? It's expensive and takes up a spell, a spell slot. Recharge may be extraneous. I think it's still, like, like maybe what we can do is we can turn it into a one-of. Right? But I'm going to leave it as a two-of right now, but I do think a, a, at least a one-of recharge does have a place in this deck. Right? Because what if we just whiff all of our stuff? You guys know how good I am at drawing skulls. Relic Hunter, so maybe we can have both Crystal Pendulums out. That's a bit of a spicy idea. That is a bit of a spicy idea. I do kind of dig it. Sign magic for arcane slots. Yeah, if we wanted to add more, like if we wanted to do protective incantation or the uh, what's its nuts, seal of the seventh sign, I think uh, something like that gives us more spell slots could be good. So we have six hits that get us spells. Crystal Pendulum is obviously great. Olive, we need to... We can work without her, but she does really increase our efficiency if we have Olive out. You could do Charisma and Familiar Spirits. I could. That would be... No, I know that one. This one's just a little cat, right? Yep. That would be a lot cheaper. That would be a lot cheaper. That is that is a plan. So the thing is, like, protective incantation is sick, but you need, like, where's our money coming from for this, right? Like, obviously our money is coming from, in theory, the money we get at the end of each turn. But then we can't really do anything else. kind of squishy so some soak she do be kind of squishy she do be kind of squishy on the meat side of things but why soak when you can just deny damage <laughs> that's a uh, that's my thought process here why soak when we can just deny that we ever took damage heavy furs jacqueline that actually seems kind of kind of sweet doesn't it for people who don't know what this one does uh, seems kind of sick, doesn't it?
And then we just get uh, versatile to get some... Uh, we versatile to get in some Lonnie Ritter. And then we just never die. It's perfect. We have three experience left. We have a bit more if we get this down here. <clears throat> what is that one card? I was like, what is this? <clears throat> Sorry, what does this Elder Sign mean? Oh yeah, Flute of the Elder Gods is just expensive. Its cost is minus two? What the frick? This is not in, oh, what, what order is this being listed in? Give me name, please. It is name. What the frick? This is the spell one, right? Oh, ground is an interesting choice. I'm also kind of curious to see how this one works here because I think these cards are sweet. Let's do it. I think this one is the one that interests me the most. Let's do Prophetic. I love me some Prophetic. Spell. <clears throat> How many spells are you actually playing, though? Two. Four. This one doesn't cost money. This one doesn't cost money. This one also doesn't cost money. Uh, six, eight, that costs money. However, what this also does, Dice Gods, is I also can use it on <clears throat> a skill test during these. So it also is basically just a guts for my spells as well, if need be. Right? Because these guys also get there. So it's economy, and it's also this. Winds of Power would be good too. Uh, Winds, if we did Winds of Power, the thing is, though, uh, if we did Winds of Power, we probably could get rid of the, uh, like, if we did Winds of Power, we can get rid of the recharge, in theory, right? Because we don't need, like, we're already hoping to fill this up with zeros, in theory, right? Um, so, like, if we did Winds of Power, we could probably lose the recharge, This one doesn't care about spirits. Let's do that. That, that. that sounds a bit more interesting to me. Especially if we can get them off the Crystal Pendulum. We still have two experience that we can add into this deck. And it could be a one of two cost card. And especially if they're spells, because we now have this prophetic, so we can actually grab some things that are a little bit more, uh, a little bit more spicy. Like counterspell. Time warp, you should draw zero, draw again. <laughs> Let's go, please rewind. I did not draw my zero and I really needed to. Um, yeah. What's this card that, it costs three, it's three experience. I mean, we're planning on sealing these, so Jewel, well, sick. 
What about a cult theory too, just because I have not played them yet? Let's two cult theories. Hmm. I've not played them yet either. But maybe. Maybe some robes or is prophetic enough? Robes would also do some soaking. The thing is though, the thing is though is if we have both of them, right? If we have both of them, that adds to the consistency of having um, our economy be a little bit better, right? I think I like that one. Yeah, where to seek in two unless you don't want to do any clue stuff. Uh, Jacqueline's going to be doing her clue stuff through Arcane Insight. There's a will, there's a way. All right, uh, we need two more cards. Realistically, it probably should be Ward of Protection, right? Like, realistically, that's just what it should be. So, that's what it's going to be. Oh, eCash for more money? That's also really fair. That's also really fair. Let's look at our money. Let's look at our curve, too. Let's see where our curve is at. Let's see where our curve is. All right, so our curve isn't crazy. Our curve actually isn't too bad. We have zero one-cost cards, so that's how you know you're doing good. Yeah, and our curve isn't crazy. So we got to add some one-cost cards. Let's do water protection. Boop. Yeah, no, I, oh, sorry, I shouldn't name this. I'm just going to, I'm going to name this in preparation for, for how I'm probably going to feel uh, when I play this deck. Alright, that's sitting nice at 29 experience. Hey, it even rhymes. Hell yeah. Alright. Shards of the Void, you for all intents and purposes, you're done. This deck I think will function enough that we can we can make it work. Seal the zeros on true magic. <laughs> okay, arcane insight. This is a bit tricky. While an investigator is taking their turn, I can spend a charge. The location gets minus two shroud until the end of their turn. Limit once per turn. So, my first instinct was Daisy. Because Daisy has a lot of things going for her, right? She can play... Sorry, my, my, I'm all stuffed today. She can play Old Book of Lore which allows us to find the things we need a lot easier. Number two, she can also play Book of Shadows, which means our Arcane Insight will never run out of charges when we have a free action and a resource to just add a charge to it, right? So that's why my first thought was Daisy. The only thing with Arcane Insight, as I was saying earlier, is that this card is entirely fair, right? Like, it's entirely just fair. So the question is, is there a way for us to just, like, break it open? Could help with men help with sharp vision? Oh, that's kind of interesting, Super Fang. That's a bit different than just Daisy. That's kind of interesting. She can't really recharge it, right? Can she? She can't really recharge it. Yeah, I agree Marie is also good as well. Marie is a nice option. She can recharge it. 
But Daisy also can recharge it, and I think Daisy has a bit better of a pool to find it than Marie does. I mean, Marie has word of command, right? Like, we can just do that again. Yeah, not many charge stuff in Seeker. Yeah, I only said Marie because she can do... But, I mean, like, Marie also has four book, right? Marie also has four book and get access to other things. See, my problem with this thing is I'm just like, how... How do we take advantage of this in a way that's not just like my shroud becomes one? Is there like, or is that just the reality, right? She can have an extra action consistently per turn, which is good with Arcane Insight. It's true. We are also only playing on two players, so like the value of Arcane Insight goes down. I think this one gets like better when there are more clues on a location. Maybe make it a zero with vantage point. That, that might be too strong, to be honest. Good combo with flashlight and old key ring to turn shrouds to zero. I mean, that seems like what Arcane Insight is very good, especially for, like, hard and expert mode, right? Like, I think that's where this one really shrines. And even Gravedigger Shovel. Any in, uh, cards that increase shroud? that Arcane Insight can mitigate? I actually don't know. I think there's like the Archaic Glyphs. Or the, I think that might be the one that cares about your Shroud value when you do it. But that's still, you want it to be higher, not lower. I can't think of any. Maybe there's one that I'm just missing. Ancient Stone and Crypto Cryptographic Cipher. Oh, Cryptographic Cipher. Actually, this that deck they might have a home people who don't know what that card does yeah yeah this one yeah oh yeah our ancient stone and uh ancient stone not archaic lifts it's ancient stone yeah yeah cryptographic cipher cares that could work and it's a free investigate Huh. All right, chat. <clears throat> so, uh, what do we do? We have three options, and I want to know what interests you guys the most, okay? So we have the boring but very consistent way of playing Daisy Walker, who is going to be able to find it and then pl uh, continually charge it up with Book of Shadows. Do we do... Uh, the min strategy, where we're going to be focusing on uh, cards like uh, um, cards like Sharp Vision, or do we do the Marie Lambeau, where she can refill it, she can take an extra action, um, but she is purple. Can she? What is her second color? What's Marie's second color? Marie! I looked at you earlier. Deck building options. Oh, she can take up to five other zero or survivor cards. Man, she has a weird pool, huh? I feel like Daisy's going to be the best for this, but I'm curious to see what you guys like of those three. Yeah, she can still do the cipher thing with him, or he can still do the cipher thing. I think Marie is the most interesting. We're looking not for most interesting. We're looking also for like who we think will do it best. Because we're trying to we're trying to give this card some love. We're trying to see who can make the best use out of it. I do agree though. I think Marie is is pretty spicy. The only problem is Baron Samdi kind of freaking sucks. <laughs> he sucks, which means we probably are not going to run an ally in this deck if we do. Dude is a jerk. Dude's a jerk. The Min one, I think, is the most interesting to me. I do think she can take advantage of the card the least, um, which is why she's my number three. Daisy's my number one. Min is my number two. Sorry, Marie's my number two. With Marie's four intellects, more valuable, valuable for her to get the minus two shroud rather than Daisy. 
But like, what? How are we finding it? Like, like, how, like, are we just then doing a basic? Let's see. Like, my question with Marie is like, what are we doing with the arcane insight then? We're lowering our shroud by two, and then just basic investigating, hoping we draw our deductions, right? Is that just like what we're doing with Marie, or can we? Is there something like spicier that we could do here? Let's try two out. We could just kind of like start workshopping, right? So Marie gets two arcane insights. Boom. She can grab a cryptographic cipher. Uh, cryptographic cipher. I like Daisy the least, maybe because I know she consistently do the best. She can run the investigating spells. That is true, it's no, it doesn't require a book test. But then in that case, I think cryptographic cipher is kind of just poopy for her. Because like then it's only a minus one. So if we do Marie, we don't do cryptographic cipher, probably in that case. right? We do it through our doom on other things. Um... Yeah, because like Daisy is like, it's just, she's just asking to be done. And as, as, uh, as you're saying with uh, Astute uh, Dunsparce, like it's, she's very boring, but like she is going to, she's going to kill it, right? Like this is, this now means it never, it never goes away. Uh, and then she can find it through her um, old book of lore, right? Like that's now like solved. No, it doesn't have to be a basic investigate. I agree. No, I, I was, I was, I was saying like, like, like that's totally true, right? Like we could just do that there, but then we have like, if our argument for going for Marie with Arcane Insight is that we can refill our charges, right? As soon as we start having to like investigate with our spells to do things well, um, we're gonna have to then ha have a charge fight, right? I think I'm accidentally building a side magic three deck in my head, I think, with Arcane Insight, Six Sense, and another spell. I mean, like, on this note, right, two Six Senses, Arcane uh, uh, ma Sign Magic, right? Like, this will get us good value out of it, right? Like, that is a potential route we could go, right? Sign magic is very fun. I do agree. Yeah, I mean, like the safer def, the cipher definitely should be in uh, in the Daisy deck. The problem is she's going to run out of hand slots. Like this is pretty competitive for the hand slot, and then we can have the book show up. If we did this, we'd grab a research librarian, right? You know, while we're doing this, because this, this series is all about um, finding the most fun, let's, let's also do this min thing, right? Like, we don't need to just make our decision before, right? Book bag helps with Daisy. It's true. We have to find it, which luckily is a lot easier with old book of lore, right? Let's also roll our weaknesses. Arm injury, God, I swear they show up every time. And I know that's just my, that's very fitting with her. I know that's just my uh, bias seeping in, but like, Hmm. 
So like, what's Marie doing? She's like, we can lose the Cypher. I think the Cyphers are bad in the Marie deck. We want the recharges. Honestly, I'm thinking I'm kind of hitting a wall with this Marie deck already. Like, because then we basically just have another Jacqueline deck for like what we need other things, right? Like we do Word of Command, right, to find it. But even then, And, like, if we, like, even if we, like, like, realistically, like, six cents zero is kind of poopy, right? So if we wanted to do these, because the plus two really helps. Because, like, even just at four, because six cents. Yeah, even with this, even with just six cents and the Arcane Insight, we really, like, it's still not great. I like Dam because it's like a ever-changing weakness, which is kind of fun and exciting. Yeah, Arcane Initiates are, I mean, obviously very important here. I just think this Marie deck, to me, doesn't have the legs. I think, like, right now I'm already, like, so, like, now I just, like, fill out everything else. And all we're doing is six sensing Arcane Insight. Crazy suggestion, Ursula with the Red Clock and Sophus combo. Sophus combo? Uh, someone did say that. Yeah, like, that's the thing, like, Daisy can take almost all the Mystic cards that Marie can. Like, like, it's just, like, I think Arcade Insight, I think, does better if we're exploiting the yellow pool than we are if we're exploiting the uh, purple pool. Yeah, I think this Marie deck's not... No, I don't think the Marie deck's going the distance for me. I don't think it's going the distance for me. <sighs> yeah, because we can even run recharges. If we wanted to, I don't think we do, because we have Book of Shadows. Like, that's how we're doing this here, right? The only thing is, just with this Arcane Insight, it just comes to the question. Like, it just does nothing. Like, so we're just building, like, a Seeker deck? Right? Someone is, they're saying, try this Ursula. The problem is this is going to be kind of expensive. She can run Relics 0 to 4. Red Clock. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you there too, Super Fang. But like, what? But then, then this also then still answers the question, like, with because I agree, not sure how Arcane Insight fits into that. At the same time, like, how? What does Arcane? If we go back to the question, what is Arcane Insight doing? And the answer is probably still just nothing, right? <laughs> it's probably still just nothing. Is there something fun that we can figure out Daisy Walker can do? And when I mean nothing, I mean, like, obviously it does something, but, like, it doesn't do anything. Like, Shards of the Void, it's like a plan. Build around Shards of the Void, seal things, get zeros, play Olive, right? Yeah, this is really a problem with Arcane Insight. It just doesn't do anything. Yes, the tokens on Sof uh, Sophist are, I believe, are only usable for, uh, for secrets. I 
I like the idea of trying to lean as much as you can on reducing trouts to zero. Min seems best to do that. Let's do it. Let's try Min Arcane Insight. Let's have some fun with it. Let's try this out. Let's do the one that's like the weirdest. All right, so we want some resourcefuls because we want to recur those sharp visions. We'll just run the Necronomicon 5 because everyone, like, it, let's just do it. Why not? <laughs> let's just go fucking nuts. Not actually. It would be sick though, wouldn't it? Uh, realistically, probably stuff like scavenging could be really good with that, right? Like, realistically, scavenging would be good. Because we, it gives us the two we need to succeed by, right? So, like, in theory, scavenging should be good. They're all the ones that can... Winging it, actually. I mean, like, we don't have a way to discard it, which is kind of like stirring up trouble. Oh, let's go. Let's go, Poggy. <laughs> That's kind of Poggy, actually. I kind of dig that. Yeah, Rihanna Swine could do this. I'm, I'm, with her, though, I'm, the only thing I'm worried about with Min is the charges. Right? Because we don't really have... She doesn't have access to purple. Right? So... Look at this. Flashlight, lantern. What the frick is otherworldly compass? Oh, yeah, this one I was like, what does this one do? Look at the ones you have. Vantage point reduces the shroud. Lantern is the one that reduces it, right? This one's shroud. I mean, lantern actually seems kind of fine with uh, scavenging, too. I thought, like, like, winging it is good. The only problem is, like, we can't discard it easily, right? I think I'm going to grab the Eurekas because they help us find what we need. We can get a crack the case to get some... Actually, probably burning the Midnight Oil will be better because our shrouds are going to become zero. Crack the case would be... Yeah, crack the case, gain zero. <laughs> unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. The true power of Min T Fan right there. I like the stirring up trouble. That's kind of cheeky. That's kind of cheeky. Connected dots only for a location with less than zero shroud. Let's go. Not sure if you have enough relics, but you could use Unearth the Ancients. Actually, that was one thing that I was, when I was theory crafting, I thought it could be, Unearth the Ancients actually could have been really sick in an Ursula focused Arcane Insight deck. I do actually think, I don't think it's good for Min. But I think that is a, a sick plan um, for, uh, or is it definitely a skill test? Is it, no, it's equal to the cost. Why isn't this a daisy deck, though? I think she is better. And this deck works better for her. Great question. Uh, because 
the min is it taking advantage with the succeed by two. She actually has some succeed by two thing. That's what we're currently thinking right now, right? Like, I do agree the daisy deck is more exciting, but the daisy deck's plan is just investigate. And like, that could be what we do. That could be what we do when we see when this is done. But just right now, I think like, we're gonna, we're gonna try this min deck and see how it goes. We're gonna build it because it's the one that's actually interesting to me while also taking advantage of Arcane Insight. And it's obviously still going to be good because it's Minty Fan, right? Hmm. I think these ice picks are going to kind of be some great, great tools for us. Grab the deductions, of course. What other choices can we do? Chris is my middle name. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the goddamn table. It's a pleasure to have you. Alright, so we probably, like, I think... We probably, realistically, I think the lantern. Yeah, if we could just immediately play it, yeah. Crafty. Those are the things we're doing. Tool, tool, tool. Insight, insight. It's crafty insights. Am I, am I going crazy? It does seem pretty baller, doesn't it? Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna run two of them to start. Jeremiah Kirby for the ally and card drawn economy. What's our, uh, that's a great question, but before we do that, let's just look at our, uh, what our curve is like. We currently have 11 cards that cost uh, an odd amount and six that don't. So that actually is a pretty good rate. We have an arm injury. I take a fight or activate action. So that currently affects lantern. Yeah, I think Jeremiah Kirby's pretty sick here. So let's say we can medical text for an arm injury. Let's freaking go. Luckily, this one's, like, pretty simple. This one's pretty, like, this one's pretty manageable. Okay, let's grab the scavenging twos. Unrelenting is also like kind of sick. Let's just like we're at 30 right now, so we're just I'm putting some stuff in that I think we're gonna round this deck out up. Glimmer of hope I think is also kind of baller. Go to one of, we can even go to zero of these.
Yeah, I think Lantern's kind of outclassed. Kirby with that many skills? Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, because to me, if Kirby draws two cards, and we currently have uh, 14 cards that cost one or three, right? So, like, that's a pretty good, pretty good hit. He also finds Arcane Insight. I, I think Kirby is fine here. I think Arc uh, Kirby is fine here. We say odd. Yeah, 14 cards. I dig it. And the secret of Jeremiah Kirby is if he grabs one card, you've done it, right? Like, Kirby just needs to grab one card to get his value. Anything more than that, and it's, uh, it's Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas. All right, so we have too much experience, but I don't really know. Like, we could go back to these ones. We could just go back to the level zeros. We really don't need the level two because the only thing that we're going to play fast is the cryptographic cipher, right? Like, that's the only thing we're playing fast. So, like, the ice pick otherwise already has fast. So, like, we can go like this. So then we have three experience for one card. Or we can cut something else to do another thing. So let's look at, like, events and assets specifically by uh, also paying attention to their cost because we really would love something that's odd here bonus points if it is a insight tool or trick of course moment of respite perfect just what we needed yeah one upgrade uh, yeah i think one upgraded scavenging is fine i uh, we'll see if there's anything else and if not we can do an upgraded scavenging Hey, how about this? <laughs> I don't think it's particularly great, but it does fit, like, everything I wanted. <laughs> it, it hits, it's odd, it costs 3 XP, and it's an insight. As far as I'm concerned, like, that was the card we needed. The only downside is it's probably like I'm it's just like oh studious is that the oh yeah let's just do that that seems better uh we do need to add one more card to our deck uh let's do a perception baby it's uh unless there is nah let's do that let's do vantage point I hate vantage point I've always hated vantage point I've never liked vantage point but that's that's what we'll try out all right, so here is min uh, plus arcane insight equals okay. All right, and now just for keeping it uh, legit, we're going to try out this daisy deck a bit. We're going to get back into this one. Obsessive. Sure. All right. So, give me that Arcane Insights times two. Give me the Old Book of Lore. Give me the Book of Shadows. Give me the Stirring Up Troubles, because that was fun. I think that's kind of be a little bit spicy. Uh, we want a Research Librarian. Okay. So why don't you also give me this min deck? Because we can, like, a lot of pieces, like, we can probably translate over here, right? We can grab the cipher. The, so the problem is the hand slot is a lot more competitive. Uh, Book of Shadows ain't unique. It ain't, it ain't unique. 
Just a normal guy right here. Arcane Enlightenment for that. It's a good call. She can probably get by with Crack the Case. Just because, um... Because she has book five, so she can even just do it on a Shroud 3 location without having this out. She has the toe bag for that? Kappa? She does. <laughs> Uh, I mean, like, in theory, though. Like, we only need one of the Book of Shadows. I just don't... I don't like this in her as much. I'm gonna put it here. The level 2 backpack would be nice. Uh, why did I search a level 2 backpack? I'm down for a level 2 backpack, for sure. If we have the experience, right? Sorry. I want to, it's yelling at me up there. <laughs> it's like, Deck is in trouble. And I'm like, worry not. So I think in this deck, we in theory could do a bunch of one-ofs, right? We in theory could do a bunch of one-ofs. Because in theory, we have a better time of finding the, the cards we need, right? Because then we can use the upgraded old Book of Lore as well. And then we get like a... We grab Shock Rabbi. Give me my deductions, please. I'll never leave home without them. <laughs> we also want a better ally, too. Right. Practice makes perfect. Um, that's a great idea. Uh, we'll see if we if we get to that because right now I'm trying like we're gonna try to look at this guy a bit. But practice makes perfect is like very rarely, if ever, a bad choice. But we're trying to do a little bit of uh, not those. I almost didn't run water protection in this one. It made it in the cut though. We're gonna try to do something. Uh, Abigail Foreman. She is always really sick. Means we can still do our old book of lore every turn. Oh, what does Library Docent even do? Hello, Library Docent. Play Return a Tomass you control to its owner's hand. Play a different Tomass set from your hand, reducing its cost by two. Knowledge is power. This is the one that's uh, banned, right? Or not banned, tabooed. That does seem to fit here, doesn't it? That does seem to have a home. We'll put it in here.
This deck has, like, no experience. Why is Daisy so crazy? Actually, that is kind of nuts, right? We have 25 cards in our deck and sell only 17 of our experience. That's kind of wild. I mean, like, we could, in theory, bump this up to two Arcane Insights because we have the cash for it. We have the cash. <laughs> Uh, where is my Dr. Milan, Christopher? <laughs> Hello, Dr. Milan, how are you? Please get in the deck. Seekers be seeking. Especially when they have Dr. Milan, Christopher on their side. <sighs> oh yeah, one of the new, uh... Upgraded ones, the uh, Archive of Conduits. Yeah, in official, I, I believe this was something that was stated on the Discord recently. In official rules, you can't use research cards when you build standalone. But for that, we say, doo, doo. higher education, probably. We're just building a good deck, aren't we? I mean, higher education is great because we don't need to uh, put it in our deck. And it bumps up our experience. So we still have eight. Nine experience that we can add here. Because 29 is usually my goal. We also still get to add three cards. So I think the Daisy deck is definitely stronger than the Min deck, but I think the Min deck is more fun building around Arcane Insight. So we'll get them both on the screen, and then you guys can choose which one we're going to play with. Out of... <laughs> yeah, we might like, we have the money, we have the cash... Just add one of these for the hell of it. <laughs> we got the money. Put it in. We, we can afford it. We can afford it. Necronomicon 5. Let's do it. <laughs> Why the frick not, right? We have the cash. Four more experience. You know what? Deduction 2s. We don't even need them, but we're doing it. Actually, we're going to do that. Perception 2s. Look at that. Oh, right, there we go. Cards, and we also, uh, easy peasy deck. Super easy, ooper peasy. Um, Daisy Walker doesn't even need Arcane Insight. Word of Protection, Justin? Nah, who needs it? We're unkillable. I mean, Water Protection, actually. Travis lingers. It's true. I mean, it almost didn't make the cut here. It almost didn't make the cut there. I mean, realistically, probably the Water Protections are the better choice. So, let's do it. We don't need the card draw here. Let's do that instead. All right, chat. So, the Jacqueline deck, we've done this one. This one's done. This is the only one we're building for the Shards of the Void. I think it works well. Um, which, uh, deck do you guys want to see for the Arcane Insight? Do we want to see Min plus Arcane Insight equals okay? Or do we want to see Daisy Walker doesn't even need Arcane Insight? Which deck do you guys want to see for the gameplay that we're going to do right away? Min? We have one vote for Min. Can I do polls? Three Mins, one Daisy. I think I want to see you experience the Necronomicon, but Min, so we're four to one. This Daisy deck, I'm not deleting it. It's living on. I mean, it's in this video forever, so I can always just recreate it. Yeah, I've never played the Necronomicon. I've never played it. Daisy, Daisy. So we're at four for Min, three for Daisy. Daisy because raw power, Daisy for the lulls. Five for Min, three for Daisy. So with knowledge is power, can I resolve, I resolve one of the things, right? Like spend four secrets, deal three damage to an enemy, seems good. Oh. <sighs> Uh, 
Another vote for Min. I'm gonna leave it open for a tiny bit more. Is there any way I got? I thought there was a way I could run a poll. Maybe there is because then I can go to. Uh, Search quick actions. Poll? Yeah! Boom! All right, we'll do it in a poll. Because then I can actually go and uh, create a new poll. Who to play? So you're going to have to vote again, everybody. Min, Daisy. I'm going to run it for three minutes. Start poll. Go vote. Vote on the poll now. Uh, I'm going to go just uh, return my dish to the kitchen. Uh, so I'll be back. And then we'll figure out who to play, as well as in the chat if you want to put uh, what the um, what scenario you want to play, put that in there too. Hello again, YouTube. As you can see, I am now in the game. Uh, Daisy. So what happened was there was an actual seven-seven split with the vote. So then we rolled the dice, and Daisy won. So congratulations, Daisy. You have a. Uh, Made this yours, and we have Jacqueline Fine and Daisy Walker. We're doing a standalone of the Threads of Fate. Should be a good time. Uh, you have three tasks before you and a limited amount of time before the trail goes cold. Where do you search first? And then we have uh, the three things. Only investigators in East Town can spend the requisite number of clues. Uh, only investigators in the North Side. And only investigators at the Miskatonic University. Miskatonic, East Town, North Side. Alrighty. So, we're looking for a Shards of the Void right off the top. That would be mighty convenient. Poggy? Did you roll more weaknesses? I didn't. I didn't. Let's do that now. Uh, Jacqueline. You can't get this one. You can't get this one. Oh, that does sound like a good day. Uh, I'm not going to put them uh, for worry about drawing them because I just replaced them. An arm injury. We already have that. And you can have two of the same, I believe. Klepto. Daisy, you already have it all. You don't need more. Thank you, Super Fang. All right. So, like, this is kind of sick. I'm keeping these two babies and then everything else is going in the pit. I don't even need you, <laughs> but I'll grab you. Okay, I mean this is a this is pretty killer. We just want to find a crystal pendulum. If we find a crystal pendulum, we're like laughing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuse me. What is this fucking hand? <laughs> I found your book for you, Miss Walker! Miss Walker, you needed your book, right? Um, so, I mean, no matter what, we're keeping an old book of lore. No matter what, we're keeping that, because we can just get this going right away, right? We don't need two research librarians. I don't need the Ward of Protection to start. It's good whenever I draw it. And um, the only reason I'm thinking of keeping this research librarian is that it can find a Book of Shadows. But I think instead we go for something else. Because the research librarian is mostly here for us to find the old Book of Lore so we can get moving. So I think we just don't draw our astounding revelations. Uh, he's a god. He might be a god. <laughs> okay, this is gonna this is gonna be sick. I'm loving both of these opening hands. I'm loving both of these opening hands. Okay. So we just got to get clues and, like, do things. Luckily, we can get clues like nobody's business. Okay. So we want Daisy to go first, and she's going to play this old book of lore. We are going to search right away.
So we're gonna grab this to give me back two more. <laughs> okay. Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, sure, why the fuck not, right? Why the frick not? Uh, we're gonna grab this research librarian and I'm gonna play him, reducing its cost by two. So we'll go like this. All right. So then we're going to search our deck for a Tome Asset. We're going to grab the Book of Shadows. We're also going to resolve this Astounding Revelation. And we're going to place a secret back on our old Book of Lore. Uh, we're then going to play our Arcane Insight. We're going to play our Arcane Insight. Uh, and then we're going to Investigate at 6 to 1. No sense in bringing this down right now. We're going to do a 6 to 1 and we're going to do this uh, with this deduction here. So we have 6 to 1. Minus 2. That was a crazy fucking turn, guys. <laughs> That was a crazy freaking turn. Now, Jaglins is going to be less impressive, admittedly, but we're still going to have a great time. We're going to play... Actually, it's still going to be really good. We're going to play this Prophetic for three. We're going to use two of the resources from this to pay for um, two-thirds of this Shards of the Void. So we're going to seal a zero. Let's go. It's Poggy time. So that was two. Um, and then we're going to Voice of Raw and refill our bank, I think. So we're going to reveal um, five tokens, obviously. I mean, we got three resources, so it was just uh, an emergency cash, which is like the baseline, right? That's what you want. I'm going to cancel... Oh, no, no, sorry. We're going to cancel this one. No, it's two more because this one also counts. Holy cow. Uh, so we're going to choose to cancel these two. And then we accept these ones. Autofail is good for Voice of Raw. All right, that was a gangbusters opening turn for both of our, our, our heroes. So I'm feeling kind of poggy right now. Let's go to upkeep. Let's go upkeep. Even those tokens and maybe one for Daisy's ability. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll get them on there. I know people like them. I usually like them more for campaign than just standalone, but people like them, we'll do it. All right, we're also going to add a Shard of the Void miss counter. We have a bunch of counters on the screen, so I'll probably forget what they all are. Just so we're all aware. All right, here's the Daisy Walker. I'll make it uh, gray. And the Shards of the Void. Alright. Okay. We're at one of six. Let's see what our evil cards are. Yeah, I'll take two damage. That does kind of... That is kind of poopy. But that's life. Sure. I think we want him here. Okay. So! We're going to start with uh, Jacqueline. And she's going to move into this location. Ooh. That would be nice if we hit Dr. Milan there. That would be kind of spicy, wouldn't it? 
Okay, um, we're then going to attack this guy. We're at five to three. I'm going to release this because we want it back in the pool. Excuse me, I'd like to unseal you. Back into the pool with you. Uh, and then we're going to spend these to add two. So we're at seven to three. And we are going to reveal an additional to two tokens here. Poggy? All right, we'll choose these two. And we're going to kill this guy. And we're going to seal the zero on that. Uh, then for our last action, I suppose I'll draw a card. None of our weaknesses are particularly awful here. All right, well, we're going to Old Book of Lore. We have a shards miss. We should also have a shards hit. Let's do it. Color tint. This one could be nice and pink because pink is a good color. All right, one hit. Okay. Yeah, we're going to old book of lore. I'm actually, we're pretty set up. So we're going to move in here. And I'm actually going to give this to Jacqueline. I think she needs a bit more right now. Like this Chthonian stone. All right. What's our cup look like? One of each of the bad ones. Okay. Um, probably the cultist is the scariest one there. All right. Uh, and then we're gonna get rid of this chronophobia. Let's just not even worry about it. Our pace is actually fine for where we are right now. All right, let's go to upkeep. Cool. Two of six. This motherfucker. You must spend one additional action to investigate attached location. Okay. So, what we're going to do here is we are going to spend two of our clues, because we're in East Town, to spawn the police station. Or we'll do, I believe this is the police station. I recently just played this one. I've done it. So sick. Okay. Um, we're then going to Old Book of Lore. We're looking for the Necronomicon. If we can find that. Man, we did. We found this, though. So we're going to bump this guy back up. I'm going to grab the Ward of Protection. I'm always worried about these guys. These guys are surprisingly tough. But we're looking pretty okay. All right, we're going to use Arcane Insight to reduce our locations to zero. Uh, then we're gonna just discover two clues at our location. Adding zero curse tokens to the bag. We're then going to move into here. And I'm going to play this Book of Shadows. Seems good. <sighs> Jacqueline. 
we're going to fire on this guy. We're going to use this. So he has um, four. He has three. So we're currently attacking for seven with this. We're not going to release this guy. We're actually going to spend a charge here. Let's go. Uh, so I can cancel the skull. So this guy takes two damage. I'm not going to seal the zero because I'm just going to release it to fire again at this guy. Oh, it just, it, it, Shards of Void is actually kind of poggy. I thought it only dealt the extra damage when you sealed a zero. All right, seal that zero again. Oh my god, extra poggy. Shards is awesome. Yeah, you definitely have to like build around it or have it be like your offhand weapon. But yeah, no, it's it's the it's kind of the truth right now, isn't it? All right, we're gonna play this. Uh, then I'll draw a card because I'm not too worried about like most of these, right? Uh, so then my turn, we're gonna reveal five, and we're gonna be totally a okay. Not this time. Okay. Uh, upkeep phase. Yeah, or be named Jackie. Three of six. Evil card is... Test foot four. All right, we're testing two to four. Okay, we fail. We move here. We take a damage and a horror. I think I'm okay with taking that damage. We'd rather spend that for another thing. We can't break this door down. <laughs> this door is uh, unbreakable. Oh yeah, we'll ward that. Good call, Stone Cold. I forgot that was even in my hand. I have a million things going on, and that's definitely worth a ward of protection. Good call. All right. We're going to Old Book of Lore. we drop this puppy out. We're going to use the Arcane Insight to reduce this location shroud to one. So we have five to one. We're going to go six to one with this deduction. Poggy? You only has one? Get the fuck out of here, man. I don't even want you here. I thought he had two. He has one. Send him to hell. Alright, so we'll draw two cards. And gain two clues. Yeah, it's just the basic one. Don't even need that. <laughs> I mean, we still could play the tote bag, right? That was action one. So we're going to investigate two more times because we have the um, this active, so we don't want to waste it. So we're going to go five to one. Let's go again. Bing. If I'm if I'm correct. This spawns the Night Gaunt that we need to kill. Let's draw a card. I mean, I might as well use this, right? Search for a spell card. Oh, name a spell card. 
All right, well, let's look at our deck list because that'll help me on that one. What spell do we want here? Probably a Spectral Razor, right? It's probably just a Spectral Razor. Thank you. Um, we're going to move here. Then I'll draw a card. Okay. End of my turn, we're going to reveal two additional tokens. So we'll reveal seven tokens. Not Poggy. Okay. That's actually, this is actually the longest I've had Dark Future. I have pretty good luck with Dark Future. I'm back! Four of six. Put this man here. Oh! Spend a clue, I think. We're doing pretty fine for clues. All right. We're going to spend four of our clues to advance the objective, because then we can kind of see what we're dealing with here. Search the encounter deck and discard pile and victor display for a hunting night gaunt and spawn in the location farthest from all investigators. Heal all damage from each hunting night gaunt in play. Attach the set aside Alejandro Vela to the hunting night gaunt and then advanced act uh, 3C. Yeah, old man finally found someone interested in books. It's true. Gets plus two player health, so this guy has eight health. Three, one, two, three, one, two. This MF is up here. Okay. Well, we're going to Old Book of Lore. It's always the right thing to do. Uh, I'll take the Necronomicon. Probably don't play that yet, right? We probably don't play that yet. Because we can use the knowledge as power to nuke an enemy we draw like a Brotherhood cultist, right? So, like, we just don't do that yet. This is a combo we want to take advantage of. We're going to move here. We need to go there, but we also could go to the university and get that location done. One, two, three. We might as well. Jacqueline! Hello! So I think we just... I think we just release one of these puppies, right? And then we fight this guy at seven to three. He's dead.
Uh, we're going to spend the two on this prophetic to play this word of command, and I'm going to say Spectral Razor again. Incredible. Incredible. Okay. Enemy phase. This guy goes, Hello! Have to do my Jackie ability at the end of my turn. We'll reveal five again. Sorry, we'll reveal seven. Not Poggy. I mean, luckily, like, it's not that bad. But, like, we're not doing any, like, crucial tests right now. Upkeep phase. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can probably burn this voice of raw. I think we're doing okay for money. That's only my my thought right now. That's just my initial thought. Upkeep over here. Cool. Five of six. Could use the premonition. So not burn a card. Um, I wouldn't have it by the time I drew it, right? I would have to have played it during the upkeep phase. And I didn't, so I missed my window. Not a bad plan, but I think I like to see... I don't. I, I, I like to have a plan for Premonition, and I like to play that like at the beginning of the player phase. I don't like to... I don't like to go into the Mythos phase with a Premonition on lock. There no call to send me Plague... Take one horror and it gains Surged. Sure, not a problem. Each cultist enemy. Oh, attach to the agenda? Oh, that's actually like the perfect time for that. Let's see another one right here. Ready for this? Let's see another one. This guy. So we don't want to send this guy too far away because we he can get things on another one. This card will always have the dog art. Oh, it doesn't? That's just a normal human face? All right, let's start with the premonition. Poggy! <laughs> is this is what we call great pogs? We don't even need to use our fucking ability. That's incredible. All right, well, let's have Daisy go first and just ruin everything. All right, well, we're going to move in here. Sorry, I didn't reveal this location. Let's move into this location now. All right, uh, let's zippity-zap this guy with some Shards of the Void. Actually, here, one, one second. I'm going to go back in time a bit. No, I think this is just the line. All right, we're going to zap with Shards of the Void. I'm going to unseal this one, but then I'm just going to put this one back in so I won't even, like, do the switch. As far as all things are considered, a zero stays on this. It's three damage. That's a hit. That's a hit without any psychic energy. That's incredible. So I think the next thing we do I think we release this and then we can spend these to put us up to 7 so we're at 7 to 3. I'm going to use my ability because we're going to hit this at the end of the turn. Poggy! <laughs> so this is just minus two. Uh, we can't ignore them. Oh no, that means I have to cancel my zero, right? Or 
Or because I can't, does it not, do I, do I not? Like, what happens here, Chad? I'm actually curious. You have to cancel the zero. Because you have to do as much as you can of it. All right, well, we don't uh, kill the guy. We don't get that zero back. This doesn't go up, but this guy does still take some damage. Yeah, I don't get that zero, though. Okay. Well. You do as much as you can. That makes total sense. That's That was my inst That's my thought, too. All right, let's do this thing. Hey! We're free. Okay. Well, hopefully we hit a zero on this one. Okay. So over here... It does say choose. Link to FAQ on choose. Choose doesn't mean choose in the game. Choose means that you actually have to choosey. It's a little bit different than choose. Same word, but it actually is, it works completely differently. All right, we're going to move into this location. I'm grabbing this mf -er right here. Uh, we're going to roast this guy. Uh, so I'll spend four secrets and just nuke this guy. That's fast too, huh? Um, I'm not going to discard it to draw a card because I think this is the best card in my deck. <laughs> Apart from maybe Old Book of Lore. Old Book of Lore is really good. Here, have some soak. All right, we have one action left. We're going to burn the Midnight Oil and investigate at 5 to 3. Minus 1. Yeah, we'll grab a clue. North side, we need two clues, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to Old Book of Lore. This thing's still doing fine. Uh, yes, uh, so my choices right now are the... Uh, Necronomicon, or two Dr. Milan's. So I think I'm going to take the Dr. Milan, and I think I'm also going to play it. Seems like a pretty good deal. All right, let's go to upkeep. Why did I shuffle my deck? All right, we're pogged. Shuffle the encounter, discard onto the deck. If there are only two acts in day in play, place... Oh, I did it one too quickly. We went one too quick. First off, how dare we? Second off, that's eh, okay. We're having, we're having a great time. Oh, if only we could... If only we could talk to this guy. Ooh, we could talk to this guy. He's even closer. I think we kind of actually want to put him up here, because I think that's where we need to go. Did 
Did I shuffle my deck? I might not have. Okay. Well, Jacqueline's going to move up here. Cost of each relic you play. Oh, actually, no, sorry. Before Jacqueline goes up there, we're going to spend two of our clues to advance the north side one. That's north side. We've done it. Put Maria de Silva to play in the curiosity shop. Spend a resource in parlay. You may chat about her. Book three. If you pass, talk to her. There must be two clues. All right, cool. She's going to move in here. This spawns a cultist. It spawns a cultist. Okay, that was action one. We're going to try to parlay with this guy. Five to four ain't cheesy. So we can go six to four, and we'll use her ability. I'm going to cancel the minus five and this minus two and just draw this minus one instead, if that sounds good to everybody, because that sounds good to me. So we'll heal a horror and we'll get rid of this. Uh, then we'll try to nuke this guy. We have seven to three. Thank you for talking with me, but now you must die. Minus two, he's dead. Cool. Um, Daisy is going to Old Book of Lore. I did not shuffle. All right, well, we'll keep it like this just because it's the fair way of doing about it. We'll grab this Knowledge as Power, and we'll give a shuffle now this time. Uh, we're going to move into here. We can get these clues there next turn. Do the Brotherhood Cultists have Hunter? That's my question for the day. I think we're going to play the Cryptographic Cipher. We do have an extra hand slot right now. We're going to drop this location's Shroud to zero. Uh, and then we're going to investigate for our last action at five to zero. So sick. Uh, and then we'll use Cryptographic Cipher to take an extra action, and now we're at five to one. Thanks for the money, Dr. Milan. You're not tabooed! I forgot I'm playing with no taboo list. Oh my god, we're rich. <laughs> oh my god, the power. Oh my god, he is unstoppable. The power. Great draw. Eh, not needed. So we're at two of six. We should get a Dr. Milani emote. Alright, this guy gets Doom. So we have uh, five to one. Oh, it's this fight value. Five to three, sure. If we fail, take two horror. I don't care. We don't fail. Hmm, this guy wants to die, huh? We're gonna be a four? That's crazy. All right, anyway, we're testing three to three. Sure. We take two horror. Ouch, ouch. Okay, what's the best way of going about this? It's probably Jacqueline just needs to get out there, right? She needs to be ready to kill that guy next turn. 
We can go one, two, hang out here. I mean, we can even go one, two. Yeah, no, no, we're just going to move right to him. It's kind of a boring turn. But I think it's the right turn. Because then we can kill him next turn. Depending, Like, if an enemy spawns up on us, we need to be able to kill this guy. If we grab Wings of Darkness, we still just move one and we don't have to move in any way. It's a boring turn for Jacqueline for sure, but I think it's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, cool. Daisy. We're going to use Old Book of Shadows. Sorry, not, not Old Book of Shadows, New Book of Shadows. So if we're making you play Arcane Insight, I think it would be better if it only costs two and rogues could take it off class and succeed by two. Yeah, that definitely would make it better. Uh, albeit, don't be sorry, the card is absolutely cracked. We're having a great time. Like, it's incredible. We're going to use it here. So our Shroud is now zero. We're going to investigate at five to, sorry, six to zero. Sweet, give me that juice. We're going to use Cryptographic Cipher to go 6 to 1. Give me that fucking juice. We're going to investigate again. Is Arcane Insight good or is the deck you've built around it good? I mean, Tasty Toast, in all fairness, these cards are what I've played. Like... Uh, it's good. I think it's I think it's both. Like Arcane Insight is doing work. Cause like I've the only broken busted thing I've done was play Knowledge is Power and Necronomicon. Everything else is old book of lore, the stirring up trouble. I think honestly, it's doing work. Like I think this is evidence that it's like the plan worked and it's doing great. We are also playing No Taboo, which does make it a lot stronger, but even if I had less resources, I think we'd still be fine. This is the, this part right here is the little, the questionable part, but I think, I th I'm impressed by Arcane Insight. I think, I think it's not great, but it's definitely better than I thought it was going to be. It's not like absolutely game changing. We're investigating, I said, right? Six to zero? Give me that shit. Currently save two curses from... No, yeah, no, like, I'm not... But I mean, like, it's... You guys are just a bunch of salty boys, aren't you? It's not breaking the game, so it's like... Burnt. I mean, I think it is overcosted for 4 XP, but... It's doing great. Like, if this was on hard... Or expert... This, is, this, this card's doing work, right? I think on standard, it's not great. But I think on Hard and Expert, this card has a case. All right, so we did this for free. We investigated. We did a free investigate. We did a normal investigate. Uh, then we'll talk to this lady at 6 to 3. Sweet. All right, this guy's going to attack Alejandro. Punches him in the face. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, I think it seems great in Rex, too. Uh, farthest from you. I don't think we like him. One, two, three. Yeah, this is the exact situation we were in before. Upkeep over here. Water protection. Three of six. Five of six in total. Test brain three. For each, uh, if you fail, take one damage and one horror. For each act the deck have completed, the skill test gets plus one difficulty and deals plus one damage. All right, so we're doing a five to four. Honestly, I think we just run with it. If we take some damage, that's okay. Minus two, we do fail. So we take two and two. We're going to take one and one for horror. And then I'm going to deny the damage ever happened. Okay, let's kill this man. We're going to use a Shards of the Void here. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there should be a level 2 version, but I don't, I think the level 4 version just costs a bit too much XP, 
Albeit, I am very, I am much more impressed with it than I thought I was ever going to be. I agree. I think the Mindek would do good on Hard Expert. All right. Uh, we're going to use our ability here. So we're attacking at seven. So we're attacking at five to three. Not particularly killer. But I think with our ability, it's going to be okay. We need this guy to die. Yeah, we're going to do this. So we're going to go seven to three because then we, it's much more likely. All right, so it's a miss, but it's actually honestly a really fine miss. So we're going to cancel these two. This guy's dead, but we get a draw card. Pogged. Uh, we're going to play the Arbiter of Fate. Apart from a free trigger flashlight, what would it do? I don't think a free trigger flashlight is worth 2 XP. I mean, like, it's a flashlight that, like you get like you can recharge takes up a slot that doesn't matter for people rogues can play it and they are now all their stuff they're succeed by two they can use their hand slots for their lock picks and other things i know with lock picks they are like it's possible to um already succeed by a billion but i think there's a, i think there is a there's a home for it there's definitely a home for it yeah and it's your entire turn as well it's not just one investigate it's your entire turn what am i doing i'm playing this to put two charges on my shards of the void hmm. okay um we're going to parlay with this lady At six to three. Oh! Six to three. We're good. I'm still skeptical. Maybe I just hate secret cards. Now, I think the big thing is that Arcane Insight's never gonna, like, at least right now with the current pool, isn't gonna break the game wide open. But it's, like, I think it's efficient. Maria takes off a puff of her cigarette before responding to your questions. Remember that both downtown and Rivertown are Ishtaka's destinations. Downtown and Rivertown. Let's put a Sandy on there. One at a time, in player order, each investigator discards a top card of the encounter deck. Each investigator starts a treachery card, must draw that card. Jacqueline. Daisy. Oh, free move? <laughs> Is this a free move? Two to four. Joke's on you, game. You just gave me value. Strange occurrences. There are no clues on each of our remaining destinations we advance. Okay. That's, that's easy. Uh, we're going to old book a lore here. I guess I'm going to take this crack the case. Okay, let's move up here for our last action. Not having to fight that guy is kind of sick. It's kind of sick. All right, enemy phase, we had a curse token. Then we go to upkeep. So those curse tokens are, uh, excuse me? No!
You son of a gun! At least it wasn't my shards of the void. Uh, you can probably get out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, I mean, it's easily just you two. All right. Four of six. Evil card is this guy. That is a little bit, I mean, not that spooky, actually, because we have the Spectral Razor. Words of power! Sure. Alright, well, why don't we just get, like, a billion clues, shall we? Uh, we're gonna... Book of Shadows. To put a charge on this, and we're going to spend it to make our Shroud 2 for the rest of the turn. We're going to burn the Midnight Oil. Investigating at 6 to 2. 4 to 2. Sweet. Grab a Clue and a Cashola. Let's go again. We don't need to get them all. We don't. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to Cryptographic Cipher. And we're going to go 6 to 3. And I'm going to commit this to go 7 to 3. Nice. So now, sorry, get out of here. Zero, I do want you later though. Don't go too far. We're going to get rid of this. To spend these. Oh my god, Harlan, you scared the frick out of me. Put him into play at East Town. Hey, Test Brain 4. That's uh, pretty helpful for Jacqueline to do. Uh, so we have two actions left. We're just going to like move to this t location. Jacqueline, uh, let us spend two resources. Sorry, what are we testing at? So we're going to be at seven to three. We can go eight to three with one of these. Yeah, I can spend one and one to do this. So we are at seven to three. And we'll spend this to go 8 to 3. Because it's just skill value for this test. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Eh, no, I'm not even going to ask that question. We're doing this. Sweet, we'll take these two. We'll, sorry, we'll ignore these two and I'll take the minus one. This man do be dead. Uh, let's try this guy out. We're going to go, sorry, discard... The top three cards of your deck. And then we do five to four. <laughs> Joke's on you, game. Uh, we'll do five to four and we'll use this. Cool. Keep the plus one. Um, I think I'm going to play this for my last action. Upkeep. Sorry, curse token. Then we go to upkeep. Five of six. Evil card here. That's a little bit spooky, and I think... I'll just cancel that card's... Uh... We'll cancel. We'll take a horror instead. This is when my turn begins. At the start of each round. Oh my god. It's plus one skill value, so combat will plus one, not with will plus one plus combat plus one. No, no, no. I, I, no, I knew it wasn't, uh, I knew it wasn't plus one to all my skill values. 
I just, I know there are cases where, like, if you're using lockpicks, if you get, like, a passive boost to your book, like, to your foot, it triggers, even though you can't, obviously, commit foot symbols to the test. And I was wondering if it's the same, but then I was like, no, nah, it just increases your skill value for it. It doesn't boost everything. Hello? Um, hi. May I show you this Necronomicon? Thanks for dying. <laughs> Alright, we are going to... Make this one. Make our location one. So then we're going to investigate it 6 to 1. Nice. Poggy. We'll take some juice for both of those. We have one action left, but first... We advance. I get Ishtaka? I don't want Ishtaka. Nearest to Rivertown. Oh, perfect. Sorry, Alejandro. More soak. You love to see it. All right, uh, for our last action, we'll move here because we can be friends. All right, we're going to do the brain test, and we are going to obviously discard the top three cards of our deck. Hey, Olive's in this deck? I forgot about that. I'm going to commit this Promise of Power because we want this to be done. So we are at 9 to 4. I am going to use my ability. Yeah, just to make sure. I'll choose to ignore these two and just draw the minus two. Actually, big brain would have been to do the curse and then just do this again. That would have been the big brain play. Uh, excuse me, Harlan, you're now a bad guy? Switch this card with a bystander version of Harlan Earnstone, removing that version from the game. Attach the set aside a relic of ages to Harlan Earnstone, advanced act three, recover the relic. If we successfully evade him by three or more, we add him to the victory display. Or, oh, he has plus four health. Or it's just time for him to die. Bye. Okay. Well. Oh my god, this guy has victory relevant text. So like let's uh Let's do this thing here. So we have four plus five, so we have nine. Nine to four seems good. That's my zero for this! How dare you! He'll take two damage. Uh, we'll fight with the Shards of the Void, and we will go like this. So we have five to four. We can do this to go seven to four. All right, you win. You win. I'm gonna choose the auto fail so I look like it looks like I've had a harder time with this. Um, this guy's gonna attack Ishtaka. Let's go upkeep.
to Doom. Not sure that counts. I don't know. I can. What are the records are saying right here? What was this one for? That was the Daisy Walker thing. Evil card. Oh, the attack. This should be attached to him, right? I don't care. Lock the door. There should be another curse token in here. Okay. Well, so sorry, premonition. We're gonna start there. Minus two. Okay. I think it does fit. I think it is a good choice. I just it hasn't triggered yet, which has been nice, which has been nice. All right, well, we're going to just um, Azure Flame this guy with that. So we have, it's minus two, so we have five. We can go spend this to go to six, because then it's six to four. And then this guy will take uh, two damage. All right, and now let's finish this with the Shards of the Void. Let's, it's the card in the deck so we should kill the boss with it i mean like even if we miss we're going to kill the boss so we have five six seven eight nine so even the minus five gets us worst case scenario but we want to see a zero here not poggy card's garbage just kidding card is actually like legit he's dead harlan Should you not have removed a start charge? Yeah. To follow proper game state, 100%. But I mean, like, we won. So I'm not too concerned about having two charges as opposed to three. Game's over. We've killed it. Absolutely crushed it. I mean, we do have 29 experience decks going into Scenario 3. So, like, it is skewed a little bit easier. Um, the Daisy deck was bonkers. Uh, Necronomicon's kind of gross. Chat was, uh, everyone was right. Um, I think Arcane Initiate, uh, sorry, Arcane Insight, um, but technically you cheated for like a couple of minutes. It was, it was, I would say it was like maybe a minute or two, which is a couple by the rules. So the game is mostly void, but it's not Shards of the Void. Am I right? Da 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 da. Um, yeah, so let's talk about these. Let's actually, here, one second. Let me just uh, get the, the deck lists open. <sighs> Display capture. All right. I do want to try this min deck. I do. All right, so let's start with Shards of the Void. Obviously, like, uh, card's actually pretty sick. Card's actually pretty sick. Um... I think it's a really good, I think it's a good offhand um, kind of uh, weapon for your, uh, for a fighter. Especially if you're Jacqueline. Like, especially if you're Jacqueline, like, this is just, like, a card that's worth it. We really did not need this Chthonian Stone. Like, just Jacqueline with Shards of the Void will get an impact. These cards, the talents, the three-colored talents, the tri-talents, these continue to impress me. I think they are, like... If your deck has even a chunk, a small chunk of these, it is absolutely worth it. The prophetic is really good in a fighter because, or like just in a character that uses these for their investigating, because like you just, you get, you can use it in your tests when you're attacking or investigating, right? Like they're good. They're, I've been very impressed by these. Uh, over here for Daisy Walker, Obviously, like, this deck was kind of nuts. She, I, like, as we were building it, she is definitely, like, the most boring user of it from the three we did. Um, but she did really good with it, right? Because she has the old Book of Lore to find what she needs. We did kind of get, like, a bonkers mulligan as well. I think even without the Necronomicon, uh, 
Like, it definitely helped. It allowed Daisy to be a little bit more um, brave and on her own. But the, uh, it's, it, <clears throat> it's not, like, game busting or anything like that. But it is impressive, and paired with Cryptographic Cipher, uh, that actually is kind of poggy. The one turn where we got the Stirring Up Trouble to just grab two clues from a location that we actually had a punishment for being investigated for zero curse tokens is also poggy. However, using it to, like, even grab two clues where you have, you bring it down to a one shroud location is also kind of poggy. I think there's a lot of things that are um, good about Arcane Insight that has its uses, but I don't think it's, like, by any means a card that, like, busts anything wide open. It's just, it's just like efficiency. And if you can take advantage of that efficiency, it's going to be good. On Hard and Expert, I think it's obviously much, 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 much better. Um, but it's fine. But I'm more impressed with it than I thought I was going to be. Honestly, I thought it was just going to kind of be like, hey, but I actually really liked playing with it. I enjoyed it. Um, obviously, having a way to refill it with, like, Book of Shadows is kind of sick, but um, just something to consider. Overall, I'd say this was a big success, and YouTube, I hope you liked this 2-hour and 11-minute video on a Tuesday. The effect stacks too, so if multiple investigators take it, you can get an even bigger effect. Minus four, minus four, minus eight. <laughs> Let's do it, everyone. Let's do a four-person uh, Arcane Insight thing. A uh, huge thank you to everyone who's watched here today, who's watching on YouTube, and who, uh, of course, are our lovely patrons. If you want to suggest cards for the next time I do this on a Friday stream, make sure to come join our Patreon page and you can influence the content and decide what cards we're going to build around next time. Thanks for watching, have a good one, and as always, GG's.